John Barrows, Make It Happen Mondays. Happy Monday to everybody here. I'm uh, switching up the format a little bit. I got some feedback from people saying, hey, John, love the, the content and the, all that other stuff and like the back, black background or the white background with the logo, but it's just not as interesting. Um, so a lot of you millennials out there are like, dude, we like look, things to look at, <laughs> which cracks me up because you all got ADD just like I do. Hopefully, I'll be paying attention to this and not looking at all the cool stuff that my daughter put up on my wall and those type of things. My goals back there, all that stuff, my calendar right there. But anyways, figured out I'd make this a little bit more interesting for everybody and uh, and go this route. So, needless to say, um, you know, again, it, and, and the idea here is just playing around with different mediums, different ways to engage and, and try new things out. I actually, I just saw something this morning, which is... Uh, stay tuned for this because this might be something I do in the not so distant future. It says Facebook brings live broadcasting to its Spaces virtual reality app. So the Oculus goggles, it's going to be out now where you can put those on and we can go to a virtual spot on Facebook and keep rolling with this. So um, I got those Oculus goggles and those things are bananas. Um, so I might be playing around with that, see what happens. Anyways, uh, today's topic is phone. I get a lot of executives calling me up these days and saying, hey, John, you know, love your, you know, can't wait for your training, doing the prep and, you know, messaging, all that stuff. But could you do me a favor and, you know, could you really highlight phone? Because <clears throat> my reps are just not on the phones. And I get it. I understand why. Um, obviously, you know, so I'm a Gen Xer, right? I grew up on the phones. There was, when I was first in sales, it was, Here's my phone, there's a number, you know, list of names, start making some phone calls. And if I was on email, I was getting in trouble. And so I grew up just, hey, you know, reco, that whole boiler room style thing. And, you know, I'm not saying it was super successful, but what it, ha what it did was it forced me to get good on the phones, which I think is actually a, a really important skill to develop these days. I wrote a blog post a little while back, you can go take a look at it, it says, I think the phone's going to make a raging comeback. And the reason is, is because you've heard me talk, if you haven't been paying attention to these or my posts, then please do, especially about this artificial intelligence stuff, right? The Shakespeare AI, I've, I've mentioned that before. Go download Shakespeare AI and watch that thing write an email for you. And I promise you that it'll write it almost as good, if not better, than you can. And so if artificial intelligence is getting that close and that good, this, are like right now, I promise you in the next two years or so, you're not going to trust a single uh, email that's in your inbox. For instance, I mean, you know, I got this email, I had them send me an email and I was like, all right, well, you know, let's see what this thing looks like. And when I saw it, I was just like, oh, holy shit. Okay. Um, crap. So with that being in its infancy right now, but that's just going to explode. I promise you in two, like I said, in two years, you're going to get an email in your inbox and you're going to think, wow, look at this rep or whoever it is. So this really thoughtful, you know, really well-researched email to me. And then when you find out it was a robot, like I said, you're not going to trust a single thing that's in your inbox. And I don't know if you, some of y'all are getting caught these days from those chatbots. I've gotten, I've gotten caught with those chatbots thinking that they were actual human being where I flip onto a website and say, hey, John, thanks for joining on the website. And, you know, and then I get into this chat conversation and they're full on having legit conversations until you realize at a certain point, wait a minute, this isn't, this isn't a human being. So my point is, is that I think email is going to be challenging, get, get more challenging to differentiate uh, for have people to trust it in any way, shape or form. And I always ask the question now for sales reps that have to be paying attention, again, what can we do that a computer can't? Because if a computer can do it, you got to ask yourself, how much longer are they going to pay me to do this? And so that's why I think phone, when done right, is a really effective way of, of well, an effective piece of the puzzle. Let's put it that way. I'm not going to sit here and say, let's make 100 dials a day and, and drop email all together. Don't do social, just do cold calling. Because I actually think that phone, when sprinkled throughout the day, is a waste of time. I think, you know, make two or three phone calls, send a couple of emails, make some phone calls. I think phone is a drastic waste of time. Where I know phone can be effective is when we hyper-focus for an hour. And we, I call them power hours. So, and, and by the way, you don't just make calls for an hour. You make calls into one very specific persona for an hour. So, for instance, my favorite way of running a call blitz is to reverse engineer a case study. Now, I look at the bottom of the case study, and I come up with uh, my message, right, which is my, I call it my attention grabber. And the easiest way to come up with messaging, right, and avoid, hey, we're the leading provider of or whatever, is to look at the bottom of a case study and look at the result that you drove for a client of yours. 
So we showed this company in your industry how to drive these type of results, and I want to talk to you about it. Well, that's a very specific result that you drove for a company that you have some backup for, right? And so that's the, the best way, in my opinion, for us to differentiate ourselves from all the other competitors out there is to talk about the results that we drive for our customers. Not just their logos, but the results we drive for our clients. So that becomes my attention grabber. Now, because that fits a very specific persona, now I can come up with two or three questions that are relevant to that persona. So for instance, instead of saying stuff like, oh, tell me about your priorities, if my message speaks to VPs of sales in the SaaS industry that you sales for, for instance, I can come up with two or three really quick qualifying questions that show I know what I'm talking about a little bit with, the, with that persona. And then I could probably also assume what the objections are going to be. Now I do objection handling training and my biggest recommendation on objection handling training is be proactive about it versus reactive about it. Too many people are reactive with objections. Flipped over to the blue jeans one. Um, but, uh, I'm, you know, needless to say, you know, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, objections, that's what it is. Objection handling. Um, too many people just wait for them to come and then kind of deal with them as they come. Whereas I'm now very thoughtful with, hey, I'm probably going to get this objection when I call this type of person. So let me practice what my response should be to that. Okay. So now I got a message. I got two or three questions that I can ask from a qualifying standpoint that are more directed to that persona. I have my objections that I'm prepared for and I have a story to tell, like a case study or something like that. So I, now I got this nice tight little package. And now I'm gonna run a list of everybody in my territory that fits that persona and I'm gonna call them all up and I'm gonna say the same thing. So I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? The reason for my call today is we show VPs of sales in the SaaS industry how to drive these type of results. Would love to have some time in your account to have that conversation. You know, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And then, you know, you know, the first two or three phone calls are gonna be a little rough. But then that fourth, fifth, sixth call is gonna to start to, you know, start to catch that groove, get that momentum going a little bit. And so you'll get better. And then if somebody picks up the phone, holy shit, you know, you'll you'll have a chance to jump into a conversation to be more targeted and direct with your questions to show you know what you're talking about. Because I don't know about y'all, I am not good enough to call a VP of sales in the SaaS industry and then a director of IT in the manufacturing industry and then a CFO in the healthcare industry and have relevant, good conversations with each of them. I'm just not. So with that approach, by calling, just running through my list, for instance, of all sorts of different personas and different names, I have to be generic with my approach. I have to say, tell me about your business. I have to say stuff like that. So, but by being very targeted, I can get in that mindset and I can have some fun with this and I can also learn something. So I usually do like a half hour prep for a one hour call blitz. And uh, during that half hour, I'm getting my names, I'm getting my lists, I'm getting my numbers, uh, I'm doing my homework. And so that when that hour hits, I'm just hitting the phone. I'm not sending information. I'm not doing home. I'm not doing research. I'm literally just mowing through phone calls. And with that approach, I can get through 20, 25 hours, no problem. All right. So if you're out there and you're making 50 dials, or even if you just have to make some dials as part of your contact strategy, that's how you can do it really efficiently without having to waste a ton of time. And you can get, like I said, you can get really efficient in it and you can learn something. You've heard before me talk about the number one thing I recommend anybody do at any stage of the sales process and at any stage of their career is A, B, split test everything you do, right? So now, say if you're calling CIOs in the healthcare industry, well, come up with two different messages to CIOs in the healthcare industry. For an hour, make these phone calls. For an hour, make those phone calls. And then just track to see which one yielded a higher response rate. So what do you think is a, hey, what's up, uh, Khalid? Uh, what do you think is a good target for the number of dials? Uh, on a daily basis? You know, I think 50 is a, a reasonable amount if you're in inside sales. Now, you know, you have to segment this out for different types of audiences here. If you're, you know, if you're inside sales and, and you sell something that's a little bit less of a complex sale um, and the volume's there, then, you know, I, I guess you could probably go up to 100. Um, if you're selling a little bit more of a complex sale and you're, you know, uh, you're going after executives and larger organizations, then I would probably tailor that back a little bit. To because what you don't want to do is just do the numbers for numbers' sake. You know, I used to work with a lot of companies. I'm not going to name one, but th this one company I used to work with, they're not really not in business. Well, they are, but they're w a fraction of their self. Is they used to have this 75 dials a day for their reps. And I remember going in in their office and doing coaching calls. And, and you know, I would do the training, and then in the afternoon we'd do a, co uh, a call blitz. 
And I saw, I used to see all these numbers on there, like right pinned up on their cube. And I, at first I thought they were just, you know, uh, sorry. Um, at first I thought they were, um, you know, just inter internal dial numbers or something like that, whatever. But then I started noticing them all, all of them were different for everybody. And so I, I finally asked a kid, I'm like, hey, just out of curiosity, what are these numbers here? And he's like, oh, those are my dead dial numbers. Those are the numbers that I, um, that I, you know, if I say I get to like 50, 60 dials by the end of the day and I got to fill it up with like 15 or so, those are the numbers I call because I know they won't pick up or they'll just go straight to voicemail. And I'm like, what? So I actually told, I, I didn't rat any other reps out, but I, I made that observation to the managers. I was like, do you, you do know your reps are just making calls just to make calls, right? Just to hit that numbers. And they're like, yeah, we know. But that's the number we want to hit them at. I'm like, yeah, that's such a ridiculous old school mentality, in my opinion. Like I said, I think phone, when done right, is a really useful part of the contact strategy. But if you're just doing dials to make dials, I think it's, you're kind of going back to boiler room old school style, which really didn't work there. I mean, I used to make 400 dials a week, right? Um, and, and, and that was a pure volume game. All I was doing was trying to trip over an opportunity. I wasn't thoughtful with my approach. I wasn't learning anything. It was just a pure numbers game for me. And man, if you want to make your ears bleed, go ahead. Uh, you know, it was barely effective back then. I had a 0.5% conversion ratio when I was doing it back then. I can't imagine it's going to get any better now. So, you know, I think 50 is decent. But again, I, I'm going to caveat that with it depends on what you're selling and who you're selling to. If you're SMB and you're selling something that's a pretty quick close, something like that, and I don't want to say it's a commodity, but... It, it's a pretty, you know, one call, two call close, 10, 15 day sales cycle at most, you know, sub $5,000 um, annual contract value thing, then yeah, you're probably going to want to be in the 100 range. Uh, if you're selling something to mid market or enterprise and it's a relatively complex sale of your average deal size is 20 grand or above, um, you're probably going to want to do more of the 40 to 50 and have it complement part of your contact strategy, all right? So one of the, uh, and, and actually that, that falls into another recommendation I have here, which is if you wanna get volume up, okay? Again, be targeted, because then you could get 20, 25 dollars in an hour, no problem. But you can also make sure that it's part of a contact strategy. I am hyper-focused these days on on the story that we're telling customers, the cadence, if you will. You know, not the blind template cadence that everybody's sending out. Go take a look at my last blog post on this one because I have a love-hate relationship with the cadence approach. But, you know, a thoughtful, targeted cadence, no problem. But, you know, but a lot of these ones are just emails. These kids, you know, they send out five or six emails and they're on an automated drip campaign. Well, let, let's, let's take an approach where what you could do is Take a persona, VPs of sales, SaaS, engineer, use Salesforce, for instance, run that list. Say that list is 50 accounts in your territory. Well, now sit down and come up with five, six, seven different things to say to that persona. Think through what their priorities are, that type of thing, and put together some, some, some emails, some templates, messaging, that, but that speak to that persona. And then kick off a campaign for those 50 accounts and go email, email, and then make one of those a call. And that call now, that's 50 dials that you can make. And now, now that can be your call blitz, power hour, right? So you can stay focused and again, and it can complement what your contact strategy is all about, okay? The more you do that, the more you stay focused on a persona, um, you kind of get in that mindset, you do a little bit of research beforehand about what these people care about, what their typical challenges are, you know, bring some case studies to the table that, that, uh, of companies that you're working with that, that do stuff that they need help with or they might need help with. Now you can start to make phone a really effective way of, of, of again, a part of the contact strategy, all right? Because it's not one or the other these days. It's not email, it's not phone, it's not social, it's not any one of those individually. It's all of it. It's all of it. It's, and it. And it really is depending on where your audience is, too. So if you think about it, you know, your audience, like I'm a, this is an example, I'm a 41-year-old man on Snapchat. Like, I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing on Snapchat, but I'm on Snapchat. And, and the main reason is, is because last year, Gary Vaynerchuk, and if you don't watch Gary, please light it up, I'll go find him. Um, but he talked about how Snapchat and you should be using it and all this other stuff. And I'm like, ah, that's kind of weird. All right, Snapchat. I thought it was just for sending inappropriate pictures to people. And so he didn't get in trouble for it. But, um, regardless, um, I looked into it and last year, and this was before Instagram took over with the stories and stuff. But last year, the number one social channel for kids under the age of, uh, 
of 26 years old or 28 years old was Snapchat. And by the way, there wasn't even a close second. It was like Snapchat, Instagram, everybody else. Uh, Khalid, it's uh, John M. Barrows. So M is in Michael Barrows, all one word. Uh, that's my Snapchat handle. That's Instagram too, whatever. So with that, um, so I looked into that and, and that's a huge demographic for me. Kids between the ages of 22 and 26 years old. That's, um, or 22 and 28 years old. That's a huge demographic. Inside sales organizations, that type of thing. So if my number one audience is on Snapchat, where I gotta be? Be on Snapchat, right? So it's the same thing. Like, is it in-mail? I don't know if it's in-mail. Is, is the person you're going after have a really robust profile and, and post a lot on LinkedIn and have 500 plus connections? And absolutely, right? But um, if it's, uh, you know, if somebody's got a super weak profile, nothing really on there and hasn't posted anything and has like 50 connections, then no, I'm probably not gonna engage with you on in-mail. Same thing with Twitter, right? That type of thing. If you have the egghead logo and five tweets in three years, probably not going to engage with you on Twitter. So it's about all this stuff. It's about surrounding people. And phone is a critical part of that because, like it or not, Gen Xers like me are now the decision makers, right? We're the ones in most organizations that are making decisions. And so we grew up with a phone. I mean, it's just, let's put it simply here. We grew up with a phone. So I don't mind getting on the phone. I like talking on the phone. And so millennials, if you don't like talking on the phone, well, then you're not going to, you're, you're limiting your chances of engaging with me. I was actually on a, a uh, at a conference a little while back and there was these, a bunch of executives up on stage and one kid raised his hand and said, Hey, you know, what's the newest, coolest app to get in touch with executives these days? And all of them in unison, by the way, didn't practice this all said phone because nobody's using it anymore. So and I think there's this, you know, chicken and the egg thing. It's like you're not good at phone, so your results suck, so you don't like the phone more, so the results suck more, right? You go into a mentality of a phone call blitz of, oh, this is going to suck. And yeah, it's going to suck. I promise you. But if you go in saying, you know what, let me learn something, let me get after this, you know, you, you could start to have some fun with it and have it be effective. And that's why, by the way, I hate full, like, call days. You know what I mean? Like, uh, hey, this is our cold call day. Like, company, I want, when I walk into companies and they say that we're having a call blitz day, I almost lose my mind because I'm sorry, there's just not enough Red Bull out there for me to get hyped up for a day's worth of training. You know what I mean? I mean, an hour, no problem. I, I can get hyped, hyped up for an hour, no matter how bad my day's going. I'm like, all right, I can get in the right mindset. I can kind of get things going here and have some fun with this. But for a day, come on. So power hours and ideally do them with a group of people, like two or three people around you at least so that you all can kind of learn from each other and, and, and pick up on what's working and what's not working, all with a very specific approach to a very specific persona. You guys do that as a team, man. You start to learn things a lot faster. So those are some tips on phone. Um, some other stuff was um, so nice. What's up, Nick? Um, another stuff just on the structure of your phone calls, okay? Here's my favorite tip out of all the training that I do. One of the favorite tips is to start, first of all, never touch base or check in. Hopefully you've heard me see that a million times before. It's the most meaningless phrase in sales. Or both, those are two of the most meaningless phrases in sales. It means there's no reason for me to talk to you, so therefore there's no reason for me to talk to you. Um, or there's no reason for your call, so therefore there's no reason for me to talk to you. So to replace touching base and checking in, use this phrase, the reason for my call is. Because if you can't finish that sentence, you should not be making the phone call, all right? And it better be something better than I want to sell you something. All right, so the reason for my call today is I was on your website. I know you're doing some really cool stuff. I want to talk to you about how you're managing X, Y, Z, whatever it is. The reason for my call today is we're working with other CFOs in the healthcare industry, showing them how to drive these type of results. I'd love to see if I could get about 10 to 15 minutes on your account to have a conversation with you about it. The reason for my call, the reason for my call. Fill that blank. And I promise you, by the way, when you, when you use the reason for your call, your confidence will go through the roof. Because if you're calling to just touch base or check in, I promise you, you're going to be very passive with your approach there. When you're calling to with a reason, you get a lot more confidence. Um, so have a reason, be direct, and make sure you know what you're asking for when, when you get on the phone. I think on the email, we can be a little bit more, a little less direct with what we're asking for because I think we can kind of butter people up, say, hey, you know, you're interested in some information or whatever it is as part of a cadence there. When you get somebody on the phone, you got to be crystal clear what you want from them when they're on the phone. So, for instance, I usually want either, you know, schedule time on their calendar, have a conversation, or, you know, a referral to somebody else. So, for instance, you know, I, I, I introduce myself like this. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Do you have a couple of minutes? 
Well, yeah, sure. Who is this? What do you want? Well, this is John with J Barrows Consulting. And the reason for my call today is I saw on your website you're scaling and hiring a whole bunch of people. And I want to talk to you about how you're onboarding them and what your ramp time is from a sales standpoint and see if I could talk to you about some of the stuff I'm doing to other companies in your industry. What's the best way to get about 10 to 15 minutes of your calendar to have that conversation? Uh, I got time now. Well, you know, I, I know I probably caught you off guard. I know you weren't expecting this call. So I'll be brief here. Um, you know, a few quick questions. What do you do for this? What do you do for that? Whatever it is, again, those prepared questions that I have. Interesting, because, you know, another company I was working with had the exact same problems, and we were able to uh, reduce their onboarding from, you know, 60 days to 45 using some of these techniques. Is that worth taking a deeper dive into? Cool. Schedule some time, right? So that cadence right there, thanks for taking my call. So instead of, hey, how you doing today? Which is weak. You don't give a shit how I'm doing. Um, thanks for taking my call. Just as polite, but now let's get to the point. All right? And the reason for my call today is, so take that for what it's worth. Pay attention to how you introduce yourself. It makes a difference, right? Sometimes it, it dictates where the conversation goes. So that's why I, I pay very close attention to how I intro to, intro to myself. What's the reason for my call? What's my call to action? And then, you know, making sure that I'm, I'm very succinct in what I do, all right? Yeah, Rob, never, never, please never touch base or check in. It drives me absolutely batshit crazy. So, um, hopefully that helped a little bit. I, I would practice phone all day, every day. By the way, also stand up when you're making your phone calls. Um, there's something about energy, uh, the way that we communicate as human beings. There's studies on this um, that talk about it's broken down by uh, the words that we use, the tonality and the body language. And words is actually the smallest one. Words is like 8% of the way that we communicate is through the words that we use. 35% is the tonality and 57% is body language. So really the phone is give or take about 43 to 50% of the way that we communicate. So when you're using the phone, make it worth it. Stand up. You know, stand up when you're making your phone calls because that way your voice resonates way better this way. It um, is a far more confident position than this. Right. So, uh, you know, and just have some fun with it. Realize that the worst thing, as long as you're not doing anything offensive, the worst thing that anybody can do on the phone is hang up on you. All right. So have some fun with it. Don't, if you go in with a bad mindset, I promise the results are going to suck. If you go in with a good mindset, you stay focused, you have a message, you have a reason for your call and you're trying something new and you stand up and have some fun with it. I promise you the results will get better. And last, before we get off here, um, unless anybody has any questions, um, when leaving voicemails, people ask John, why should I even leave voicemails? People don't even call me back. That's true. I don't leave voicemails because I expect callbacks. I leave voicemails for one very specific reason. It's because when I leave voicemails, my email responses go up. All right? That's really the only reason I do it. And I love the call email approach where you're calling and sending an email at the same time. So you go, hey, the reason for my call today is blah, blah, blah. And by the way, I'm going to send you an email right after this. So if you want to um, hit me up on email, you know, feel free to email or call me back. Or vice versa, you send them an email. And then right after, it's, hey, it's 2.55 on Wednesday afternoon. I just sent you an email. Um, you feel free to call or email me back either way. All right? That approach is a pretty effective approach I've seen. So in summary, focus. Have a reason for your call. Uh, do power hours instead of full days. And... Um, and know what you want to ask for, right? Know what you want and have some fun with it, all right? Hit me up anytime. I got a whole bunch of resources on my resource library you guys can go into, check out for phone and, and how to come up with messaging, those type of things. So feel free to dive into that. And, and as always, hit me up on Facebook, hit me up on Snapchat, uh, any of those. I'm always happy to talk sales. So do not hesitate to hit me up anytime you guys not, all right? So with that, I got to bounce a little bit early here today. I apologize. I got a webinar coming up for a client um, at one o'clock. So um, I will see you all soon, all right? Let's make it happen. Later.